So, you heard that you have to lower your larynx in order to sing better, in order to sing high notes well. Hmm, fuck that shit. You see, somewhere along your journey to becoming a singer, you might have heard of uh, vocal advices like, oh, you have to lower your larynx because now your larynx is rising too high and then you are going to choke if you don't lower your larynx. So, you have to lower the larynx so that uh, you can keep a more stable and neutral larynx. Uh, so, you have to make more hooty sounds like, and really, some people would just follow this kind of advice because it sounds legit actually and every single vocal coach is kind of talking about it so it must be true, right? So, this fucking idiot tried to follow their advice and practiced his songs like this. I can try to stop it Oh, I like Hands down, I've lost this fight And I was drunk Enough for you But I just can't hide the truth Oh sweet Lord Jesus on a motor bike Anyways, initially I didn't really want to film this video Because I know I'm going to look really really stupid here But I guess if I have to prove my point So that you can improve in your singing Then it's worth it because you see, most of you, when you're trying to lower your larynx when you're singing, you are doing what that fuck that is doing. We don't realize that when we intuitively, for most of us, when we try to lower our larynx, what we are really doing is nothing more than agitating our low placement. Let me explain. You see, that low larynx sound that you heard just now, it is created by me pushing my tongue backwards so that my larynx can be lowered. You can try it now. Try making a low larynx sound. Just try it. And there's a very good chance that you might feel that your tongue just retracted back into your throat just a little bit or maybe a lot. Maybe you can even feel it. It's quite obvious for you. And if you have watched my previous video on what is the perfect tongue position that we should be using for our singing that all Grammy Award singers are using then you will know why having why doing that tongue retracting motion it actually prevents you from accessing your high complete mixed voice vocal placement and actually force you to be stuck in the low and heavy chest voice placement if you haven't watched the video yet I'm gonna put a link in the cut go ahead and watch that video after you're done with this video and the previous method to lower the larynx is how most amateur singers would try to lower the larynx when they hear this advice of oh, I have to lower my larynx in order to sing high notes better. Then the next question becomes, then why are vocal coaches all over the internet and on YouTube telling us to lower our larynx so that we can sing high notes better? Are they just bullshitting then? Well, mm, some are, but those that actually understand what they are saying, they are right. They probably explain it correctly, but they didn't show you exactly the correct how to achieve that. And that is what I'm going to try to show you today here. You see, to achieve a lower larynx, there's actually only two ways. Method number one, and that is you make use of vowels to lower that larynx. For example, the U vowel. You don't have to sing. You just have to say the vowel U. Try saying U, U, U. Ooh, naturally you will feel your larynx being moved lower a bit okay or if you can try o o o o o it also kind of kind of lowers your larynx a bit but if you were to try brighter vowels like e e a a e a e a e you'll feel that maybe your larynx rises rises up a bit and therefore you you shift away from that lower larynx position so, when you see vocal coaches telling you to make a hooty sound, what they really mean is just modify the vowel such that it is now a darker vowel. It has a, it's a bit of U and O in the vowel so that your larynx will be automatically lowered by using a vowel. Understand that they are not telling you to purposely push your tongue down and retract your tongue to jam up your larynx. But I've seen vocal coaches that tell their students to jam their tongue down so that they can push the larynx lower and then therefore they have a lower larynx. Comment down below if you are a victim of that. So, 
don't ever purposely jab your tongue backwards and downwards to cause your larynx to get lower. Because when you do that, so what if your larynx got lowered? The sound you produced just got a whole lot shittier as well. Enough for you! Now, method number two, and that is you're naturally born with a lower larynx. Huh? What, what, what do you mean by I'm naturally born with a lower larynx? That exists? Yeah! You see, we are all born with different height of the larynx on our neck. For example, I myself, I'm born with a high larynx. You can see it here. A famous singer who has high larynx as well is Shawn Mendes. And Jeremy Jordan, a famous Broadway singer, who by the way is my favorite Broadway singer, he has a low larynx, naturally. And get this, usually, usually, singers who are born with a lower larynx, they are more naturally talented in singing than singers who are naturally born with a higher larynx. And why do I say so? Because we all know that as we sing higher and higher into our vocal range, there's this tendency for our larynx to start rising. And that's perfectly fine. Because if you have good technique, your larynx will rise a little bit. It is unavoidable. It is going to happen. If you have a bad technique, then chances are it will rise way too much, right? Until your larynx reaches like your forehead <laughs> or above. I don't know, but it will rise way too much and we don't want that to happen. Then your sound will start to get choked, right? You, you'll feel like your sound is going to choke and... Uh... So, you see, if you're born with a lower larynx, when you're singing high notes, you have more room for your larynx to rise. You see, for example, this is our neck, right? This is our neck. Um, if you're born with a low larynx here, you have this amount of space to rise before you choke here. But if you are born for high placement, you are here to begin with, then you only have a bit of room for larynx to rise as you ascend higher into your vocal range. But if you are unfortunately born with a high larynx like myself, then you are kind of fucked if you don't keep your high notes in that high, complete, mixed voice vocal placement. Just look, first of all, I don't advocate a high larynx or low larynx when it comes to singing. I advocate for a stable or neutral larynx. And people who have already purchased my complete mixed voice 1.0 course, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Because you see, most people, they focus on the wrong thing when they try to lower their larynx or when they try to stabilize their larynx. The real reason why your larynx rises too much is because you are singing your high notes in that low placement. This entire region is where the low placement is at. So the way I teach is forget about larynx, right? Forget whether is it high, low, medium, fat, small, large, whatever, I, I don't care, right? Forget about, absolutely forget your larynx exists and start focusing on that high, complete, mixed voice, vocal placement. Because when your high notes are sitting in the high placement, what is actually happening is now you're allowing the acoustic energy to latch onto that high placement that has a strong support point. And you actually so-called bypass this low placement so that you don't hold on to your larynx and pull it up when you're trying to sing high notes. So when you change your focus to the high placement, will your larynx still rise? Yes, but way lesser now. Don't think that, oh, my larynx is just dead, like a dead body, it's not gonna move. Hell no, it is still going to move, no matter what you do about it, right? It is it's just biologically impossible for larynx to not even move when you're singing. It's just gonna happen. And we don't want to be focusing on the wrong things. What do I mean? By focusing on lowering the larynx. Because when you're focusing on lowering the larynx, you're not actually solving the root problem that you're facing. The root cause of why your larynx is rising uncontrollably is because you're allowing the acoustic energy to latch onto your larynx and your tongue, which is the low placement. And can you imagine the energy, the acoustic energy pushing your larynx up like this? But now, if you shift the energy 
backwards and you bypass this low placement and instead you allow it to latch onto a high, strong, complete mixed voice vocal placement. Their larynx is out of the picture. It wouldn't rise as much. Let me show you what I mean. Now I'm gonna play that video again and I wanna show you like on the spot what it means to bypass this low placement and straight away go for the high placement and allow your sound to latch onto the high placement and compress into the high placement. I can try to stop it! Oh, I like! Instead, what if we do? I can try to stop it! Oh, I like! Hands down, I've lost this fight! Hands down, I've lost this fight! I thought I was strong And I thought I was strong Enough for you But I just can't hide the truth <laughs> What the fuck was that? Enough for you But I just can't hide the truth Yeah, so does that sound way better than what the fuck that is doing over there? I don't know, maybe it just sounds a little bit better So you get an idea when I'm able to keep it a high placement, just now I'm still trying to um, keep it, I'm not trying to keep it a low larynx, but I'm trying to keep it more of a neutral larynx. And honestly, I'm not even thinking too much about larynx. A uh, high larynx, stable larynx, or low larynx? No. I'm thinking about high placement, high placement, high placement. Can you hear that I bypassed my low placement completely just now? And I went straight for the high note. G4, G4 sharp, A4. Yeah, so, mm, it's kind of manageable right a lot of guys will say that a4 is a high note but really once you can access your high placement you heard how i compress into that high placement just now to sing that high note in the song right and people be like oh you just built out a, a, a closed vowel it's nothing amazing if you think about it like a lot of times people say that oh open vowels like ah like air eh, is easy to belt but when they try to belt e and Ooh, they find it impossible. When I'm singing the U just now, when I belt out the U on that closed vowel, U is U, EU, EU. I'm belting out two closed vowels, deep tongues, at once on A4. That is going to be impossible if you're stuck in your low chest voice placement. But when you can bypass this low placement and you switch to the high, complete mixed voice vocal placement, it is so, so powerful. And have you wondered why, you know, some people, they maybe, have a, you may, maybe, maybe you have a friend like this, that they have been singing for years, and yet they still sound like they haven't improved much or they are stuck in their high note. Maybe you are one of them. I don't know. Like, you feel that you have been singing for quite a while now, and yet you are still not improving as much. Like, you are hardworking, don't get me wrong. You know that you are hardworking, and you actually put in the effort to practice vocal exercises and watch all these YouTube videos, or maybe even buy a course or get a vocal coach. But have you ever wondered why the improvement is just not there? When I asked myself that question last year, right, this clip is about one year ago, I realized that a lot of times we think that, oh, working hard is the key to success. Yeah, of course. Of course working hard is the key to success. Right, if I didn't work hard, there's no way I would be able to improve my singing. But have you thought of, what about working smart? Because I know in 2017, 2018 and 2019, I've been working very hard also. Last year, I've also been working very hard. But why when I worked hard last year, the improvement is so much higher than when I worked hard for the past two and a half years from 2017 up to the end of 2019. It's because of this one simple thing, working smarter. Working smarter by bypassing this low placement and letting all your high notes sit in the high complete mixed voice vocal placement. And when you're able to do that, when you truly are able to access the high placement and compress into the high complete mixed voice vocal placement, you will realize that no other vocal tips and tricks you will ever see is going to be nearly as powerful as this high, complete, mixed voice, vocal placement. So then the question becomes, so how do you access that high placement, right? I've said it a billion times in my previous videos. Access your high head voice placement first. Then, 
compress into that high head voice vocal placement and you will land so perfectly into your complete mixed voice vocal placement. Of course, that is the most direct way. Some people might get it immediately. Some people be like, fuck, sh fuck, like how do I do it, right? And that is why I've created complete mixed voice 1.0. Because look, I can only share with you so much in a short YouTube video. I know a lot of you, you watch my YouTube video and be like, oh, this is so much value you gotten. You learned a lot of things from my YouTube videos, but guess what? That is just a tiny fraction of what I teach in complete mixed voice 1.0 because that course is a, it's over five hours long. And I go in depth into exactly how you can access your high complete mixed voice vocal placement. And once you get my course, and you come back and you watch all these YouTube videos, you realize that suddenly everything makes even more sense than now. And I've already cracked the code to accessing your high complete mixed voice vocal placement with that guy over there. And it is not an easy journey. We have made a lot, a lot of mistakes on the way. You can get a course now and do it the easy and fast way. Or you can also watch my other YouTube videos that are available. I actually already reviewed a lot of the secrets in my other YouTube videos as well with regards to how to access your high placement. So it's up to you. If you want it, then follow the link in the description box below. If not, I'll see you in my next video or click to watch another video. Catch you soon.